I at least like would like to see the Mania team try making a 3D Sonic game, even if those games are very hard to make and adapt <laughs> to the idea. Sega, not fucking with game development. Pick one. Well, I mean, the Persona series, you know, like I said, they they own Atlas and they don't fuck with their uh, games developments. I think Smash Ultimate will give Sonic one last chance. I mean, you uh, say that, but I constantly and consistently forget that Sonic is in Smash. Which admittedly I mean, is more of a me thing, but you know. I mean, pe people have always been saying that this is Sonic's last chance and all that jazz for years. And all because of one mediocre <laughs> game and, well, not mediocre, a very shitty game, let's put it that way to describe it better. Mm. Which was Sonic 06, and then you got a mediocre one, which was basically a glorified fan fiction made canon. And then you got Generations, which is pretty good. And Colors, Wait. which allegedly was good as well. Wait, which one was the fan fiction? Sonic Unleashed, where he becomes the Werehog. Oh, that. I just figured that was because someone, is, uh, someone in Sonic team had played too much God of War. Well, that too. Well, I mean, compare the Werehog's uh, attacks to Kratos' chain blades. It's pretty much the same yeah. thing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> they can't fuck with Atlas because people will physically raid their Japanese offices and kill them. All of Akihabara will rise up. <laughs> well, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what we need. Maybe we need a little bit of that. Maybe not necessarily killing, but, you know... Maybe maybe we need a little bit of, like, serious action here. Like, dude, stop fucking with it. But still, they they can't, and they don't. I think the people who made Sonic games made by the fans did a better job than Sega themselves. That's a fairly well-held opinion. Without, that goes without saying. Yeah. No, it is, it is pretty much a little bit to the left there, yeah. Um... Uh, it, it's pretty much a fact that apparently Sonic fans can make better Sonic games than Sega. It's which been is known for years. Well, you know, I, I would like I, to say cause... I don't play Sonic. I haven't played Sonic fan games. I mean, uh, oh, I was a semi-active member of the Sonic hacking community, which basically spawned the Mania team that everyone knows and loves. And the Christian Whitehead, the person that made well, directed Sonic Mania, I kind of want to say. Uh, created this fan game called Retro Sonic. Uh, made a port to the Dreamcast. Had very good physics that resembled the originals. Never got to complete it, but he ended up uh, getting pretty busy with other projects. And then there's mm -hmm. Stealth, or Simon Thomley, who who's made... Sonic hacks for years, including Knuckles and Sonic 1. Um, he also made Sonic Mega Mix, which has a lot of Sonic characters, including Shadow, as playable characters. Jesus. It's a very high-speed platforming game, which looks very good, and I think is something to look forward to. Maybe if he decides to pitch it as a new Sonic game to Sega? I don't know. Welcome to the Castlevania Symphony of the Night stream playthrough where we talk about Sonic. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> where is my VR space, Harrier? Oh, that would be the thing of dreams. That would be dope. I don't know. I never played Space Harrier. I actually, when it comes to Sega, I haven't actually played a lot of Sega games. Like... The, the only two that I'm thinking of immediately off the top of my head are Persona 5 and Bayonetta. But those aren't Sega games. Yeah. They were only published. Like Sega by... games in name, but... Well, they were, they were published by Sega, I think. But, uh, beyond that... Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Knuckles! <laughs> <laughs> And to kind of bring it back around to the uh, the Castlevania series, now featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. 
I mean, seriously, give me those parts of the map, damn it. Oh, no. Keep trying, Snake. Use the wolf to cover the map on top. It may take a while, but it works. Featuring. Oh, yep. yep. <laughs> I beat Sims there we to go. it. <laughs> I beat Sims <laughs> to it. <laughs> yes. Oh. Well, that actually reminds me. One fan kind of made a Sonic fan game using 3D models, using the 2D gameplay, and. It looked like it played pretty good. Who? Like, very good, comparable to the originals. Who did that? I, I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, some member of the Sonic hacking community whose name I can't exactly remember for the life of me. But it's there. It's called Sonic Fan Remix, I think. Hmm. It looked very good, in my point of view. But as for fan-related projects involving... 3D game engines and Sonic, I don't really have a lot to say about that since it it could be pretty mixed when it comes to that. So from what I've from what I've gathered from this conversation is Sonic doesn't need to doesn't necessarily need to quote unquote die, but he does need to basically leave the 3D market entirely because 3D Sonic the Hedgehog will never be anywhere even remotely close to decent uh and the fan team that made mania needs to make the two-dimensional sonic games. that's what i'm getting from this conversation yeah or just let the mania team handle the rest of the sonic games from here on out i guess if you want to put it that way that's my point of view Right. So in other words, keep Sonic. Do it. So in other words, keep Sonic in 2D and never let anyone that isn't the Mania team uh, actually make the game. Which, at that point, you may as well just kill the character. Like that is that is life support. That is on life support. That is straight up just you are you are desperately trying to keep it afloat, and I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily know if I uh, if I like that. Sega never let Telltale make an episodic Sonic quote unquote adventure game, so Sonic isn't completely dead yet. Well, yeah, but Telltale is gone, so. Yeah. When was the last time Yuji Naka directed a Sonic game? I think it was 06, I think? Maybe? Shadow. According to, oh, Over wow. According to Overlord, it was Shadow. Wow. Well, that's quite a game to go out on. Yeah. Again, one of those things that I, I swear I remember was I was positive that I remembered... Uh, Yuji Naka specifically saying that the Sonic fans were completely impossible to please. And for some reason, I can't find it anymore. I used to be able... Uh, or I, I used to know that kind of thing, but for some reason, I, I don't doubt can't that quote, find it. I don't doubt that quote exists at all, not in the least. Well, I think I remember seeing something like that on Sonic Retro. I uh, don't necessarily doubt it myself but again it's it's really hard when you, you try it's so hard to find something you just can't fucking find it. <laughs> right, I think we're coming up on death right here. Um, or no, it's the doppelganger level 40. <laughs> Thank god he doesn't copy the Crusagrim. I, I guess I'm mistaken. Death isn't gonna come up until we get to whatever's beneath the cavern. Um. Or in this case, on top. Below the cavern. That's the catacombs, I think. And the boss of that uh, area is Galamoth. Yeah, yeah. The catacombs is underneath. I don't. No, exact. That's where Galamouth is. Uh, can we not? As, can, yeah. can we not have the faker thing, Overlord? Please. Yeah, please. That, <laughs> that's something that uh, 
seemed like everyone in the mother was high on Sonic Adventure 2 back in the day. Like, oh my god, this area, like, with all the fucking dark octopuses, I used to spam Soul Steel in this room to farm uh, EXP. You just stand up at the top and, and uh, on one of those platforms and, like, really quickly spin the, uh, the Soul Steel input. Oh god. Yeah. It was really good. Dark building. Soul Steel! Yeah. That doesn't kill him for some reason. No. Yeah, I wonder... Probably like I wonder what... Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, I also don't know what... Con... What, like, uh, calculates your magic damage in this game, so... Okay, the fairy's at level 63. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever. Dark metamorphosis. Yeah. Yeah, that's my that's my Robert Belgrade uh, impression. <laughs> it's not very good, but you know. All right, let's head over to. They have 280 health. Okay. The voice clips in this game are great. Well, I imagine the voice clips in the original, like, PS1 and Saturn versions are great. But in this one, everything's been redubbed. Yeah, I... <laughs> Gamer Dude 35, I miss the original voices. I can't say I blame you. The original voices are kind of, you know, the draw. Like, one of the draw of Symphony. So... Yeah. You're making that fairy overpowered. Shut what up. The, what does the fairy even do? Like, uh, <laughs> besides wax you with a hammer if you get petrified, which is she fucking also hilarious. gives you potions if you're low on health, which, which is very you, useful. Which you don't appear to be, so. Yeah, and then if she's maxed out, I don't know what she does. Mm hmm. As aside from maybe gives you a max potion or something like that? I don't know. Okay, what do they call this room? Is there any way for me to check? There is no way for me to check. Yes. Oh yeah. That's the thing about the Sword Familiar, once it reaches level 99, it pretty much can one-shot everything. Mm-hmm. They have a charm that the new voices do not have. Yeah. I... I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think Yuri Lowenthal was the worst choice for Alucard. So you've made it this far. I mean... All right, here we go. Here's the death. Uh, <laughs> not while there is breath in my body. Take you from death. Oh, okay. I used to. Okay. Um, never really used his spell though. I only ever. Uh, I only ever used his spell to do the uh, the Sword Brothers glitch to get tons of money, which they patched out in this version of the game. So yeah. Um. Okay. So death just turned into a xenomorph with scythes. Oh yeah. my god. And oh now yeah. We have Dracula's eyeball. <laughs> to avenge Luigi, kill death. <laughs> Luigi's fine, at least until he gets fucking obliterated by Galeem. Um. <laughs> the right. best part is, is, uh. <laughs> that, that was revenge for, uh, what for how many tries death took in Rondo. Mm hmm You remember that? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Hey, are you gonna... Whoa, there we hey, go. What's this? <laughs> switch? We might prefer oh my god, buttons. it's even worse from the front. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might as well level up the uh, alternate demon familiar. Boop. You just boop the button. Hey, Slogra! You were a boss at the beginning of the game, and now you die in one hit. 
Okay, two. Why is his face like that? It's some reference. It, it's probably it's a, a reference to, to some kind of Japanese demon. Probably a Tengu demon, I imagine. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Why You're not exactly yeah. able to tell uh, very well via the sprite, but Tengus tend to have very long noses. It's not even that he has face. a very long nose, it's that his face is misshapen. Yeah, I can see that. Of course, how much of that is the actual face, and how much of that is the limitations of the sprite work. How do you get his face to look like that? It's a different, uh, familiar. There's the demon, and then there's the end demon, or the nose demon. This is the nose demon. It was added in, uh, this version of the game. The PSP version of the game, which was poured into the PlayStation 4 for Castlevania Requiem. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the half fairy, the green fairy and the nose demon were also in the Japanese versions of the PS1 releases of the night. And mm -hmm. we have the Alucard sword. Sweet. Cool. Not that I'm going to use it. A pity it's not useful, like, at all right now. I mean, if you wanted a single hit sword, just use the fucking sword from nowhere. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely one right. of those games where you kind of have to go out of your... You kind of have to go out of your way at the end to be not broken. Did they add Maria as a playable character for this version, like the old Saturn version? Uh, yes, yes. I believe so. Yes, except Maria plays just like her Rondo of Blood incarnation, and like the Saturn incarnation, where she plays more like Mega Man and has Street Fighter-esque attacks. Wait, there's actually a there's actually a, a variation. Uh, like in the Saturn release, she pl plays more like Mega Man and and has Street Fighter like special moves. Like if you execute Biako, it's basically a super fireball attack. Huh. And then if you, and then if you use Seiryu, basically it's Kiei's Dragon of the Darkness Flame. <laughs> oh God! So a screen nuke. More like a dragon that you can control to wipe everything out. That right. causes multiple hits. A screen nuke. You are describing Basically, a yeah. screen nuke. And then you can also summon all the all the four sacred beasts all at once and give Maria invincibility. Mm -hmm. That I knew. Unfortunately, Maria in this version she is the hard mode of the game and she doesn't give anything for trophies. What is even the point? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Right, so basically now we're, like, I guess if you want to call the reverse catacomb this, basically hell. Yeah. That's what she does to Richter if, if you biff the starting fight with Dracula. Yeah, she summons all four of the sacred beasts and makes Richter go invincible, and then you can't lose, and then you start with garbage stats for Alucard. I just Hydro stormed the hell out of him. I, I literally farmed up uh, 99 hearts at the beginning of uh, Symphony and just Hydro stormed Alucard. Or Alucard? Dracula. Fuck. <laughs> Alright, Spike Breaker, do your work. I haven't gone on my work. Have it on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, at some point you should probably take that off so you don't take tons of damage. Yeah. Not power of the holy cloth. Well, you know. Mono is in the place. I love how they spell mono with two N's because no one can spell, apparently. Yeah, no, no one can e even tell the difference between mono, which has one N, or mono, which has two N's. It's the same thing. You, 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 have, you have said the same thing. At no point should mana ever be spelled with two N's. Also, I love how these blood skeletons, uh, they're meant to be like the reverse version of the red skeletons, but they're white for some reason. 
Yeah, they were also yellow back there. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, Konami can barely make pachinko games and slot machines now, so... Konami is absolute just despising of the... Wait, does that wall not open up any further? Uh, no, that's as far as it goes. Okay. Yeah, it... Again, it it continually surprises me that the Belmonts are in Smash. Like, I've said this over and over again. And, like, Snake Snake thinks that it's Konami trying to get in into everyone's good graces. But I just don't think it's going to happen. Like, this was mentioned when uh, Sonic, uh, what, what was it? Uh, no, excuse me. When Mega Man got into Smash 4, shut up, phone. Uh, when Mega Man got into Smash 4, uh, there was the whole joke of, oh, Nintendo is treating uh, Capcom's property better than Capcom does. Well, it's kind of the same thing for Konami. Yeah. At this point. Except Capcom has slowly crawled all the way, almost all the way back from the depths of, well, hell. From the depths of this place. Yeah. They came back from Michigan, guys. <laughs> they changed people. I'm not implying that so, Michigan is hell. I'm saying there is a town in Michigan called hell. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that this place right here, the Reverse Catacombs, is essentially the ninth circle of hell. How'd you think of it? Uh, probably because of what looks like the little tiny bit of snow coming from, from, from the, well, the ceiling, I guess. Hmm. Nintendo had to pay a lot of money. Shut up, phone! Nintendo had to pay a lot of money to Capcom just to get those characters in Smash. Uh, you got a source on that? Not, not saying that'd be an asshole, but... It wouldn't surprise me if they had to pay some kind of... some, some kind of money there, but, you know. Apparently there's a flu warning. Wow. Okay. Okay, there's a room back there. Our, our big fall sale and more at Humble. Oh, yeah. I'm just checking my email real quick. Yeah. Health alert. CPC warns flu activity on the rise. What the? That, and I guess I'll just have to get a vaccine or whatever. Everyone is getting a little smash kickback from licensing. They have to be. I think Nintendo yeah. may have paid Konami for those for those characters. I mean... I understand that, but that's kind of... That there's... It's kind of one of those things that you don't just want to take for granted. I think. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Is this not, is not even doing Okay, yeah, it is. Yeah. It says improve improve status after sunrise. I I never understood what the, the sunstone and the moonstone did. Like are is that tied to your system time? Uh no, it's tied to end game time. Uh what? Then how does yeah. it determine what sunrise and sunset? Yeah, I know, that's very confusing. If you if you constantly look at the view from the outer wall. It's just always night. Mm. Right, I am going Who to start from the save. Oh, okay, improve statistics between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. game time. Yeah. I mean, it's not tied to the PlayStation's clock, considering the PS1 didn't even have a clock. Oh, okay, I was actually partially right. The Saturn version is based off of the system clock set. Okay, that makes sense. The while Saturn in the did have a clock. While in the PlayStation version and all other ports, it's based on the total playtime. Imagining oh, the game okay. imagining the game to begin at midnight, dawn is therefore at six hours of playtime, while sunset is after eighteen hours. This continues to cycle at twelve hour intervals. All right, walk, armor, do your thing. So for or... you, so uh, f since you've spent nine hours in the game, the game will imagine that it's nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. All right, Gallimoth, let's do this.
Okay. Let's dance. Hey. Oh jeez. Now I'll I definitely think the Alcar Mail Oops. helps with the resistance. Well, he's dead. Hey! Finish what Kid Dracula started. I guess. <laughs> oh god, hardest boss in the game. Gallimoth? Yeah. Mm, I wouldn't really know about that. that. Hardest if you don't have a game-breaking weapon like the Chrysogram. Which, like I said, at this point, you have to kind of go out of your way to not have. Yeah. <laughs> Because even if even at this point, uh, if you don't have the Sagrim, you still have like the shield rod and the Alucard shield. So yeah, which which is the most damage dealing weapon in the game? Mm-hmm. Right, Mr. Sid's out. Here. Yeah. Gas cloud. Gas cloud. Oh, wow. So are you so now we can kill serious? enemies with fart. So now we can kill enemies with fart gas. <laughs> <laughs> we just killed Gallimon for what amounts to the ability to weaponize Ugas. 